Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Travellers Season 2, Episode 5, it's called Jenny. So full spoilers for the episode, and I remember doing this last season where every so often there'd be an episode that was just titled one of the characters. I'd be like, okay, right, let's see, let's see how that plays into this, what, did, what are they going to do with that character this episode? And, of course, Jenny's the, the girl that, that uh, you know... Philip. Philip, yeah, but I mean, she's, she's the one we've been suspicious of, she's the one with the Leshy faction, is she not? You know, her, her entire entrance was very suspicious. Dodgy. Yeah. yeah, suspicious to say the least. And we ended the last episode with Philip having his, you know, he gets the message from the girl and he starts like, and we see at the start of this one, he's writing off, so it's all this uh, chemistry, essentially. It's yeah, all it's, a formula. Clear, it's clearly a formula of some yeah. sort. Yeah, uh, very, very in depth, and he's writing it all down. And this other traveller comes in, sort of like takes photos of it. But the suspicious part, of course, is that she takes Philip back to the, the hideaway and is like, yeah, we're breaking up now. And he's kind of delirious. Uh, we find out later on, of course, that he, he has no memory of this. Yeah. Uh, of writing it down on the wall and uh, being, you know, taken here or anything like that. And she's like, yeah, I'm going. Bye bye. Here's, here's like a few months supply of drops, which will, you know, keep you going for a while. If you use them properly, and out, out, out of the out of his life she goes, uh, and obviously this becomes much more important later when we come back to her. But we, we kind of let then go into the plot and what the the gist of the episode is, uh, which plays at least at first all like a season one episode, and that we have a, a a thing to stop. We have a thing you know in history to to deal with. I liked it that it was something. It was a bit different though, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, there's, there's going to be this, uh, this, this flu, this virus that's going to, you know, t- t- uh, sixty thousand people, and, and they even have a joke about how to them that seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, sixty thousand is not, not yeah, a lot. Percentage of wise, out of the whole planet, it's it's relatively small. Yeah, it's really small. It's like way less than one percent. Yeah. So, um, so so they have to. But let's try and stop this. In particular, there's three people who spread it a lot. So they they go to these three people. Uh, and we also have they all get their their cells vaccinated. They get the they've got like a traveler they go to, and he's got like a box of like stuff to inject them with, and they, they all do it. And because we we find out as well, there's been a two week jump from that scene with Philip where he wrote everything down, because that, that that was him writing down stuff for this. And you know this has all happened, and it's like okay, this is fine. And then things start to go wrong, and then other travelers because they actually make a point of mentioning that our team is one of the last teams to get their their shots. Yeah. And other traveller teams are starting to get sick. And sure enough, they test the blood of our team. And Mac and Marcy are both immune, just naturally. Just just by yep. luck. And the other three are infected. Tons of people are infected. Uh, some of the earliest inf- infections of travellers are like, dying. And it turns out that, no, no, this, this thing has been caused by them. This is spread because of them. Uh, we get more, obviously, specifics later on. That, but quite early on, you're like, okay, whatever they did, it's making it worse than whatever it did before. Yeah, it was quite clear. Like, okay, well, they're they're the ones that are worse, and you know we know that this isn't a, it's not the flu. It's something entirely new that that even in the ones from the future haven't seen before. Yeah, because that's that's what Marcy says is that they've ran it through like everything that exists now and then everything you just know about from the future and that's never existed before. It's a completely yeah. new thing. And uh, one little point is when it's shown is that other people, other travellers are getting sick in other parts of the world. There's like a guy in Germany with like he's, you know, two travels in Germany. And I, I thought it was amusing that they get the traveller message and it's like all the code, and it, but it actually comes up in German. And I, I thought about that and I went, well, he's come back into this body, so theoretically he should still speak English. So. Well, I mean, you're assuming he didn't speak German to begin with. I, I mean, sure. I assume. Yeah, uh, you. I'm assuming he learned German because he was like, "Well, I'm going to Germany, so I should probably know German." Oh yeah, no, I, I'm saying that. Yeah, I, I assume he does speak German because he knew he was going to Germany when he came back. But like, why would the traveler messages that are secret and no one else is supposed to see have to be in German? Cover. If anyone does see it, it's it's at least it's still in German. Well, not going, why are you getting messages in English? That's weirder. Yeah, so, 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 oh my god, oh, I speak English, you caught me. I learned a second well, language. Uh, yeah, I know, it's not that uncommon, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. No, uh, the, the answer to this that I can maybe think of is that in the future, the even though it, is, it feels smaller because it's meant to be like, you know, post apocalyptic and the, the director's like running several, how many travelers, maybe they are all over the world and maybe they are actual just native Germans who are travelers in the future. Yeah. 
so I mean, yeah, I mean, I can kind of explain it. I just I, I stopped and went, huh? Why is that in German? Even I, if he I, is no, in Germany, I, I think it's interesting because we've not really seen it. Uh, I mean, we're we're told, oh, okay, this affects the whole world, but we've never really seen their actions outside of America. Yes, really. true. Yeah, it's, it's all been U.S. And and then we see you know uh, we see what was it Berlin and China I think is in this one yeah just just briefly of course but yeah. briefly but it pops up saying oh this is there and I'm like oh okay we're international now yeah no it's interesting uh, it's interesting to me to think like were they all together in the future or was it different camps in different parts of the world that communicated with each other and... yeah I'm not sure yeah I mean it's one director so presumably yeah. Uh... Uh, at the very least, they're all in communication if they weren't all together. Well, that's it. But because it's an AI, it can just be in contact with itself. It's just, a, you know, quite easily. It just needs to have a machine. Oh, sure, yeah. I'm not really disputing that the the, the, the director can't be all over the place. It's just a case of... Yeah. Like, if, if everything's as bad as they say it is, like, you know, other are, are are parts of the world that are uninhabitable or, there, you know, then yeah. kind of thing. I don't know. There's so much about the future we don't know yet. But it's just, it's just, my mind got going just with that little, just that one message being in German. I started thinking about it. But we, uh, so, so this becomes a crisis. Uh, one other traveller dies. We don't really know who he is that well, but, you know, the boy brings him in and, he, you know, he, he dies. They, they try to save him. I will say the, the visual, I mean, blood doesn't bother me on its own, but blood pouring out of someone's eye and their eye being all red is kind of icky. Yeah, it's, 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 it looks good, though. Well, yeah, just, just from, from an effects point, it looked pretty good. I feel like when I see that, I just assume you're a goner. There's no saving you. You're done. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It feels like it feels like the last warning sign that you're about to die to me, yeah. <laughs> which is probably not accurate. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of times you can have a bloody eye. And you'd, you'd... Visually, it looks yeah. it looks more horrifying than just pouring out your chest. It's kind of like how if you've got a dog fighting scene, you know, in planes in a movie, if you show up a plane spinning, you know, yeah. that, that's like oh, the plane's going down. It's, it's, he's done. Yeah, unless yeah. he intentionally does a spin, but like if he just starts, yeah, yeah spiraling out. Yeah, that's just that he's done. Yeah, and that's what it feels like. Kind of like that, but so 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 we we have all this coming in, and we have and you know it becomes this big outbreak where all over the world people are starting to have have problems. Uh, you know, Marcy, who throughout the episode has been clearly wanting to connect with David. Uh, I actually really liked her little subplot in this of uh, wanting to talk to him, reaching out to him, and of course by the time he actually gets back to her, and he's, he's all for meeting up with her. The the, the flu is you know the virus is outbroken she's, she's like no stay in, stay in home and but of course David being like a nice guy and a hero of sorts is like no no all my patients are out there I have to go out and help them and, and all that kind of thing uh, but I, I liked her moment with Carly actually I, I actually kind of appreciated now as much as we're not a big fan of the, the whole Jeffrey Jr. plot more Jeff than Jeffrey Jr. but yeah yeah sure um, I actually I, I, I think to give them credit when they sort of like a few episodes ago when they brought in okay right they're going to be living together and we especially kind of cringed a little bit when he immediately started drinking so literally the moment they got the baby back oh I'll have yeah. a drink to celebrate like we, we cringed like, oh, are we going to go down this, this path so far they've not really done that and then in this episode I kind of liked what we saw of most of it because especially from Carly's perspective where it, it was like she was now relating to what Marcy was feeling before she got reset before you know the idea that she didn't want to lose because at the time she was all for it she was like oh, this, this is an obvious choice so that's how you die no I like that stuff I, I, I was still a bit you know bored by the, the bickering part oh yeah the bickering yeah whatever just, just, I'm like okay you know, this is but, 45 seconds of this that I'd, I'd rather just not watch. Oh, yeah, the, the, the bickering between them I could, I could totally do without. But just, just in the sense of uh, Car- Carly becoming attached, and I, I like that she's actually bringing up that it's it's technically not really her kid. Like, cause I feel like season one maybe, not suffered, but could have done with maybe just that, that acknowledgement at some moment. I think she got to it a bit quick because the other were, the other people in the group were like, yeah, she's not really yours, and but she was like, no, she is now. And it mm. felt quite quickly that she'd accepted the, the, yeah. the kid as, as her own. I like the, the little moment of doubt here, and just sort of thinking she's stupid for feeling this way. Uh, and Marsha's like, nah, I mean, every way that counts. You can, I mean, you, 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 I mean, I don't know, if, I, I need a calendar out to check how long they've been here, but arguably she might be the mother longer than what the actual mother was at this point. Possibly. If not, you know, can't be that far off. Okay, yeah, can't be far off. Uh, admittedly, some time of it was spent with the child and and care because her, her and Jeff aren't, aren't trustworthy parents. But yeah, uh, which by the way, when when uh, Jeff comes home, because uh, he runs into Mac and Mac tells him, "Oh, you have to go pick up your son." Like she can't go near him. He obviously doesn't tell tell him why. But uh, he 
he, he comes home with, with Jeffrey Jr. <laughs> and I was kind of like just sort of cringing throughout the scene because he kept like sort of coughing in the baby's direction. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you're just infecting the kid. I know. You're not, you're not helping, are you? Now, I know the kid's already got a fever, but we're not actually sure if this, the fever the kid's got is actually the thing that's been spread. Yeah, or if it's regular flu. Yeah. Because uh, as it, Carly says, oh, the, you know, he's already over the worst of it. So it's like, okay, so presumably it was regular flu. Because uh, Marcy checked him out and said he'd be fine. Yeah. So, especially since regular people only just started to show symptoms because the track, because we get this big scene later on where Marcy, quite honestly, dumbing it down for us people who have no idea about any of this stuff. I thought this was a really nice. Speak for yourself. (laughs) I'm speaking for both of us. Uh, I am aware of how pandemics happen. Oh, you could have explained everything she did in that scene. I think I could have done a pretty good job, actually. I mean, I wouldn't have had the, the hard figures of, of the days because I don't know what they're making up, but yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, but uh, I thought she did a really nice job uh, in this scene, or the writers did a really nice job of making this really clear and simple to sort of yeah. to g- give you the scope of why this is really bad, comparing it to a regular thing. Uh, I actually, I, I really like the simple thing where it says, you know, if this is under one, it's, you know, it's, oh, I'll die in a day, it's fine. It's not a big deal. If it's over yeah. one, it's like, oh, no, this is a disaster, this is an epidemic. And I thought, oh, man, that's not, that's a small margin of, uh, <laughs> like, you know, you expect that to be a build, like a gradual, oh, this is kind of bad, this is pretty bad, this is really bad. But then this was just like, no, it's either fine or no, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's the way, it's, it's, it makes sense. It's the way because yeah. it spreads exponentially, you know, because, so if each person affects you X amount, yeah. Well, I mean, is, is it's a pretty different big deal. You know, I mean, six, if if you infect six people, you know, you it spreads so much. But that of seven course, is exponentially more. That's not the only factor here. The other big factor that she brings up, of course, is the incubation time. Like before you start, no, no, before you know you're sick yourself, there's the, there's this time period where you're infecting other people and you don't know about it. And this was not only just was it you know spreading quickly. It was also like this was like ten days before you you'd even yeah, notice you so had you something. So you were spreading it to lots of people before you had any idea. Yeah. So so you were already at like over three hundred people spread by day two. Yeah. And you didn't even know for another eight days. So it was it really did a nice job of like okay this is how big this is this is how bad this is, uh, and it really set up the stakes which I liked. And obviously we know they somehow have to get a cure because I don't think we're going to lose half of a cast because half no. of our cast are infected by it. So I'm fairly certain we're going to get some sort of cure but before the time runs out. But still, yep. it set things up, um, and of course, it, it all boils down. They, they eventually, uh, the, you know, the little traveller comes in and he's like, oh yeah, you, you wrote all this down, I came and got pictures, and Phelps like, I don't remember this, and I've got, you know, he's the historian, he's got the memory. Yeah, yeah, they're all like, hey, hey, you don't remember something, This that's wrong. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I was with Jenny, so he goes to get Jenny, Jenny's, you know, sick herself, and he's, she's OD, seemingly she's tried to end it quicker, she's just like, oh, I know I'm dying, so... Yeah, let's get this over and done with it. Yeah, without the pain. And brings it back, and this is where we get to this big chunk, and obviously there's been all subplots and stuff we'll get to, but this big final five minutes, there's such a such a mythology dump <laughs> on us yeah. here. Things we've been speculating about, you know, yeah. because we haven't had any hard facts, we've been so, like, okay, it could be this, could be yeah, that. Some have been speculating, some things we could never have maybe guessed, just based, you know, we didn't have the information to guess. But it, it does answer some of the things that we've been saying as well. Some very interesting ideas here. So here's the facts. Here, here's what she laid out, uh, and forgive me if uh, a lot of information here. So forgive me if I stumble through some of this. So that device, the 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 frame, the framework. Yes. That was not actually for storing the director per se. The reason why it, they wanted to destroy it is because it was actually all the faction members being sent back to that, because when the director got reset. That took away the faction's ability to travel anything through time. Or not anything, sorry. Just consciousness. They can send messages back through time, but not people. Yes. And because of that, in their last few minutes before that they completely lost control, they had a few minutes of, you know, before they knew about this was going to be the end of it, they sent thousands of people back into that device. And all those people at the FBI, and all those people, I presume, from the uh, the timeshare meetings that were happening... Probably these these are mass like groups of these faction members coming out of the machine and going into them because at the end of the episode here we see that uh, Walt leads like a group of soldiers into the room of the device and presumably all those people in the device are just getting factionized yeah, exactly and and this explain you know you've been saying all season is like well yeah you know, we haven't really seen the the arrival in countdown very much mm. because yeah, this that's true. because they're not able to send people back so you know they're already there so they're not doing that anymore. Yeah, because we obviously we got the bomb countdown, and that was a nice big moment. So I'm yeah, yeah. I, I I actually wonder like, do we get another 
sent back person at some point where so okay so the actual the the, the non-faction team the traveler team well that's how we're going to be able to distinguish it in the future presumably yeah, oh, I, I think honestly, I'm still going to doubt it. <laughs> Just I mean, like, doubt because, it. Yeah, because what else has happened in the future since? Yeah, of course, you know. but it's 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 more reason to at least it's reason to assume that it's from our side. I like the idea though. If we don't get any of them all season, that the only one we got was number one. That is kind of cool. It makes him feel important. I mean, he is important anyway, but it just makes it feel a little bit extra special that all season he's the only one we get that countdown timer for. Yeah. That's a pretty cool idea. And then the other thing, so. Yeah, so they can still send back messages to kids uh, and even adults, but they they don't have any historians that they try to record. But as we know, whenever anything gets sent back, it intentionally disrupts all recording devices and electronics around. So she had to lure Philip into a situation that when he gets that message, and they know because obviously she'll be told they're going to send it back at this time through through the kid. Yeah. She had to dope him up enough so that when this happened she could sort of erase it from his mind and you know give him the mind wipe stuff so that he wouldn't remember it but they'd, they'd get the formula back and it, obviously he thinks they're they're helping vaccinate things the other traveler did as well but this is all a ruse this is basically no no overpopulation is one of the biggest reasons why we why the population is doomed so you know what taking out uh what was it 30 percent yeah, yeah the, 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 this this uh, virus is designed to sustain 70 percent of the population so only 30 percent but that's still two billion as one of them Which, points out I, I thought it was particularly interesting that as our team you know we're, we're on the other side of that ratio you know three to five so i mm. you know it's almost like 70 percent are going to die is it from what we've seen but yeah. clearly we're told otherwise well maybe that's uh taken into account when when a cure will be made could be. Could you know, be. it's like okay, if, if, if it just let, if it was just let to ride out, then sure it would be way more. But bec- they can sort of guess roughly. It's yeah, going to take yeah. X amount of time to. Could be. Of course, also it could just be you know unlucky. It's a small sample size, so you know it it it, it, it yeah. was heavily weighted, you know, in that way could, in this group. Yeah, but could, that doesn't mean the whole population is. It could be unlucky for our group, or it could be they're just wrong and they made a mistake and they think it's could be. engineered they, they that way. They claim it was engineered to be that. Yeah. But. Um. But this is the thing, and I think that's this moral dilemma of like who are actually on the right side of things here, because I think inherently I think we have to say, well, I mean they're not trusting a computer to make all the calls. That feels like a good idea, at least on paper to me. <laughs> yeah, that that's this is where I feel this season's going. Oh, you know, I think like, it okay, is as well. So yeah. it's it's okay. Do we trust a computer? We've mentioned it a lot already, but you know, do we trust the computer? Or do we trust people? Whereas you know the. This seems like this should be a move from a computer, more logically. You know, the cold hard data. That's the interesting part of it. Yeah, this is this feels like the what the, the what Skynet or what you know, pick your computer operating system yes, from any movie. Yeah. It feels like the thing that would do. Whereas, if so far, it feels like the director was actually a little bit more humane, especially since the faction are also are not just picking people who are about to die. They're they're picking lots of people who seemingly were going to live. I mean, those timeshare people. You can't tell me they were all going to die. No, exactly. Uh, I think that's. It's it's kind of saying that the the restraints that they programmed into the director mm. are working presumably. Yeah, and then I suppose the argument becomes is that sometimes you have to do the extreme thing in order to get the result or survive or for the you know for the good of the man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like th- this this sounds harsh to kill all these people, but are they actually right? I mean, it's it's one of those where they they could be in the long run. You know, like m- maybe maybe that is for the best in terms of what they're saying. You know, they have this future knowledge. Hmm. But is that worth it for anyone who lives through it? For anyone who it's, loses exactly. someone, do do you care that oh the human race will go on, but everyone I cared about died, or you know several exactly. people I cared about died? Exactly. In terms of the numbers, what they're saying makes sense, but it, it it's it's very cold and detached, which is why I think it's so interesting that it comes from the, the human side yeah. instead of the, the, the android. What was that was was then of course leads to the, the natural question of like is is humanity and being worthy of surviving more important than simply surviving? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, maybe I'm a romantic, but I think it does. I mean, sure. I, I, yeah. if, you, if you have to kill everyone you ever cared about, or you know, or betray them all, or you know, even just if you if you if you ultimately have to do a lot of bad things to just keep surviving, was it worth you know being alone at the end? Like, probably not. That, that's it. Depends on the scale. On your on a yeah. personal level, I'd agree, but on you know a scale of all the entire planet. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just boiling it down to. A yeah, yeah. Thing, but I think but... that's what this is, though. This is the stake of the the planet, the entire race, and. I think it's 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 a different question at that point. Yeah, it's the moral moral quandary um, yeah. is interesting. So no, yeah, but big, 
<laughs> big things at the end. So, and obviously, our team all know this, and they, they actually say out loud, every mission we've had since that machine went on has been from the faction. We've been yeah. working for the, the, the opposite team. Uh, so, is it, I'll, I'll be interested to see how they tackle all this. Interesting to see how they react from this. I mean, does this confirm that, uh, that Mars, no, Marcy, sorry, uh, Carly's kill order, does that confirm that that's, that was faction? Depends, because when that kind of came through right around that time, yeah, didn't it? I can't remember if that came before. Or, uh, yeah, I feel like it might have been slightly before, or maybe it was during. But here's the thing, though: they could still send stuff back before. It's not like they couldn't. No, no, they could. So that's it. It's one of those where that one's still really murky. Yeah, so it doesn't confirm anything with that one. No, I'm more inclined to assume it was the faction because Mac wanted to destroy. You know, he was going to destroy the machine, so it's like, yeah. oh, let's stop him. That's why I'm inclined to lean, but. We, we don't know for sure. Well, it's an interesting thing. If we destroy that machine now, we, we know there's thousands of mines in there, if you will. people, essentially, yeah. yeah. But then the other ones who are breaking the rules and coming back through... I mean, I know our travels have done that, but, like... Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're yeah. taking just anyone. Yeah. So, so it's a, at, yeah. Least, at least they assume they're taking it. I mean, we know that. They don't for sure yet. They don't yet. Uh, they seem to have everything else, though, because they know their, their missions have been fake. They've all been from the faction and uh, they know the faction have been the ones sending things. So no one's been sent back traveler-wise since, which I think will be interesting when that happens, because like, I feel like, okay, there must be a, you know, a reason why no travelers have been sent back from the, 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 the traveler side. Yeah, and, uh, and this is this is what interests me. Why have we got nothing from the director? Because, you know, they say oh, the, this, this was the director rebooted, so this is where their window was to do all this stuff and send back. After the director rebooted, could it not resume normal protocol? Yeah, that's a really interesting question is what's going on with the director because part of me thinks, well, if it takes time to reboot, then he couldn't say anything back. But then it doesn't matter. It's time travel. It wouldn't matter what yeah, yeah, time it passes. Just went once it's done, it, it can still yeah. send it back to this time regardless. So something's clearly not right in the future with the director right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, could could the director be in that machine as well? As well as all the mines, I don't, I don't know. Is the faction also run by a AI, and it came from the director? Like, so it's like a an offshoot oh, okay. of it. Okay, I see what you're saying. I don't know. I'm just just you saying that and saying they're both in that same device. No, no, me... I know. I know what you're saying. I'm inclined to say no because the faction seem to be like, no, we should be making yeah. our own decisions, and it would feel weird if they're still just following orders from a machine. Because here, here, okay, here's my wild. And I'm not saying this is right. I'm just going to wild speculation theory time, right? The director became aware that its its boundaries were stopping it from fulfilling its mission. Okay. So he intentionally rigged things to make like a duplicate of himself. However, he went into a body and pretended to be human, selling the the whole lie that this is human led when really it's not. Okay, although you do raise an interesting question. Could, could, I mean, could the director be in a human body? Because uh, instinctively I want to say no, because mm. it would, would it not overload the brain? It would be too much information. Unless you'd make a smaller version of the... Yeah, like, you know, a, like a condensed... Like, rather, yeah. Just the core identity of the, the, the AI. The mobile app version, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and, and the question is, do we have the director in the 21st in a human body? Or will we get that? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I, that's a wild speculation. I don't really have much to back that up. See, I'm just thinking of interesting ideas that... Where I, I almost feel like... I don't know, I love the, you know, this is the, the human versus the machine debate, especially since the human side seem to be doing the colder things. I like, yeah. I like all the questions. It's shaking and it up, isn't it? All the moral quandaries that's bringing up are really interesting. So I'm not, I'm not saying I want to take that away, but I'm just I'm thinking of, you know, what if the faction find out they've been lied to? Like, and they are, like... Mm. you know all working for the one thing no, that would be interesting yeah but then arguably that makes it all one evil computer thing and well while well, i like sci-fi stories like that does that maybe rob this of some of its uniqueness i don't know but like i'm just you know spitballing yeah. that's true i think that what is clear this episode really opened things up we you know things we've been speculating mm. anyway but this was like no here's some you know cold hard facts yeah. at this point of the season so now we've got the rest of the season to play with the the uh, you know the the results of what this is the consequences of these these actions. I think a lot of the the questions we have about how the director's faring in the future will be something that Grace herself asks a lot. Yeah. Going forward, 
I, I think so. She's she was been getting a bit worried this episode because she's the one who's devout to it. She's the one who helped build the damn thing, and she she she, she keeps saying, "Oh, the director will, will solve everything. It's fine." And then you know, Marsha's like, "It didn't help him." And she looks over, and the guy who just died is like, in like a you know body bag. Not even a body. It's just, just black bags that have been tied together because they'll have yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, so her her, her faith, uh, which I, I don't think. I mean, it's been tested, but I don't think necessarily that she'll just immediately. I, I think her her. Her, her method for tackling this, at least for the first little while, will be, okay, something's wrong, how can I fix it? That'll be the... Yeah, I think she's too scientific to yeah. just go, well, I'll leave it to chance. She'll yeah. want to try and uh, ensure yeah. what she can. I can, if... see, I can see it eventually getting to a point where she does kind of think all hope is gone, though. Like, where... Yeah whatever's happened happened in the future she, she can't fix it anymore or I, something i do wonder if, if uh, first you know they play the idea of you know as bad as this looks to us now and you know we're going oh yeah this person's just died you know why didn't the director intervene yeah does she go the director has more knowledge than us it's still playing the plan it knows what it's doing better than we do because it has the extra knowledge that we just don't have from this point except now she knows it's coming from the faction she does yeah so that that you know any, any know, thought does she process know the, does she think the silence it, it you know it could be because you know she was okay, worried yeah. about the silence is she going no no that's that that's part of its plan it knows what it's doing it's it's doing this for a reason yeah do, do you know what i think this does to a lot of this show actually in a really interesting way is that it, it it builds it into almost being about faith again even though it comes from cold hard places of they knew what this future was they came to the present day they knew what the rules are there are rules in place there are things they know that happen but because everything's changing in the future and they have to debate it is almost like debating whether or not god is real in a weird way because they it's, don't know yeah, what's changed it's like knowing god was real yeah but is it anymore yeah, it's, it's a really interesting t- way to tackle that those it, themes. It's, it, yeah, like it's it. like the idea that they saw God, so they they knew it existed, but now that they can't see it, does it still exist? Essentially, and is he the good guy? Exactly. That's that's the other big question. Yeah. So now I'm loving what it's doing with all those those things, and obviously worth mentioning that it's not like the virus is taken care of at the end of the episode. That's still ongoing into the next one, so we'll be seeing yeah. that in episode six. That's five, yes. Ron. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. You can <laughs> count. Yeah, yeah. This is not a count. This is a memory thing. <laughs> this is not a count thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'll quick little moments that I think I want to touch on. Just obviously, I like David helping his patients and yeah, it was nice. Him going around. He goes to the shelter and he's helping them out. Uh, did you ever see him again? The crazy woman who doesn't want any doctors. That's right. It just reminds me in season one how we kept saying he was kind of this, almost this representation of just good people who you wanted to see them save. Yeah, he he is the idea of what they're trying to save, essentially. Yeah, yeah a, a good person. That, that's what they're trying to, yeah. you know, make sure the future's there for. So having him out in the, in the in the thick of it with the sickness and all that, it gives us someone to care about. And we've yeah, used that before. Yeah, it's just reinforcing but, the the whole yeah. idea as well. It's 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 nothing new. It's just just doing what it's doing, but it's still good. Here's a moment that played surprisingly well for me, and I say surprising not because I expected to not like it, just because I just didn't expect it to hit as well as it did for me. And that was the when Cat and Mac are at the doctors, and she thinks there's something wrong. Oh, this is what happened last time. We get called in to talk about what happened when she had a miscarriage, and mm. she she's convinced that it's gone bad. And Mac's like, "Hey, everything will be okay." And she's like, "Stop saying that. You just keep saying that. No, don't. You no. Know. Yeah. She's just getting mad. She's she's not in a good place. She's expecting the worst. And the doctor just sits there and goes, "Oh yeah, that thing's gone. It just meant there was maybe a fault with the reading the machine scanned, so something wasn't there or whatever." Uh, but you're yeah. fine. Everything's good. You're exactly where you need to be. And it just, you know, it says bye, mocks out. And her reaction to that, like her holding back the tears and like the happiness, right after she's just given, you know, Mac shit for trying yeah. to tell her it would be okay, that played really well for me, actually. No, that's fair. I, I, I think the acting, more than anything else, is what sold it for me. No, it was good. I, I think yeah. her stuff is one of the, maybe my weaker things. Not that scene particularly. But yeah. more the lack of anything going forward. We get like one scene with her, you know, with the flu stuff. You know, Max going, "Hey, stay inside." But yeah. I feel like I could have done with a bit more as you know her being like, "Yeah, but what? What if this affects the the baby? You know, what if this causes me to lose it? You know, just some of that sort of things that I think are the the maybe they're a bit obvious, but I think they're the things that should be being yeah, poked at. No, maybe I, I think Kat's a really interesting character. She, she kind of raids this really interesting line for me, where. She's not as integral to things going on. She's not necessarily the heart of everything like David is. But 
she she's not as like completely tangential as the, the the Jeff stuff is either. She's kind of in this interesting place where sometimes it almost feels like her plot could go in that direction, but it always kind of relates to what you know how Mac feels, and it gives him this extra hurdle to jump through. Especially now with the baby and him making these choices. Because I, I remember in season one, our stuff was only okay. We weren't necessarily feeling it until that plane episode. And the idea of his like quandary of tr- wanting to save her instead of himself became really interesting. It was like, okay, wait, I'm seeing the, the value in yeah. what we're doing with her. Uh, and I think this season is d- continuing that. I feel like w- what they're doing with her here in this scene here gave me some really interesting ideas of how he copes with this idea of being a father and breaking yeah, the rules. Yeah, I, I and- think that, you know, her, David and Jeff, they all have the same purpose. They're showing these facets of normal life yeah. that, that the travellers are getting attached to in you know, various ways. David is obviously the immediately the most likable. And it's important to have this, of course. Like, it I, is. I, that, this, would, this, this show would feel emotionless if we never actually interacted with any of the regular people. Exactly. And I, I get it. Like I get all of them. Like, even Jeff was supposed to be like, yeah, we don't really like him, but we're still supposed to save him because that's yeah. what we're supposed to do. The problem is we spend too much time, I think, devoted to that where I just don't care and he's kind of annoying. Whereas Kat, like you say, is, is in the middle between the two. She's not immediately this likable person that, you know, we want to see, you know, do good things. But, you know, she's got qualities that we like at yeah. times. And, you know, it, it's grown. And, and well, I think the other big factor with, with Kat is that all of the reasons she gets mad at Mac or she distrusts him for everything that's going on, him hiding stuff, all of it makes complete sense and is believable. And he can't explain it because he can't just tell her what's happened to him. Yeah, we, we understand that. You know, we, we see the, the, the reality of yeah. why he's doing these things. We know what's going on, of course. It's, it's basically it's, it's the Skylar White syndrome, except in this case, he's doing it for good reasons. He's not just being a criminal <laughs> and doing yeah, bad things. The one bit that made it kind of murky was his relationship with Carly, of course, which, yeah. again, from his point of view, there was nothing wrong with it. He had a relationship with her yeah. before. And, you know, he just continued that. But to her, it's like, well, you're, you're cheating on me. This is yeah. weird. You know, I don't like this, so, obviously. So all of her complaints with him make sense and are understandable from her point of view. You don't blame her for any of those feelings or thoughts. Exactly. And her plot leads to a lot of really engrossing moments, like that one in the plane, like this scene here in the doctor's office I thought was really good. So it, it does lead, it builds to things that actually, you know, do things and make a difference in plot and give us emotions. So, uh no. Uh, worth mentioning, the, the travellers that were given out the uh, the serum... Uh, I actually thought he committed suicide, but the team seemed to think that it was it was a sort of assassination. I I think it's assassination because it was two gunshots, right? One in the chest, one in the head. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. It's very very like assassination style, and also, okay, they're shooting each other, so one of them shoots. Them, does you know? The I don't two think shots I, on one of them. Yeah, I don't think I noticed the uh, the chest wounds. I, I I thought you know the husband shot her in the head, and then he shot himself in the head kind of thing yeah okay but then yeah, again I'm... it makes sense that they look to see if the weapon was there and if it wasn't there then yeah assassination because yeah <laughs> it'd be in his hand or otherwise or on the floor exactly. so. well yeah it'd be close by yeah <laughs> uh so so no lots, lots of interesting stuff uh yeah uh, that's that's no, I, I really like this episode and like i said you say a lot of it is it's kind of for a a large chunk of it's very season one in the sense of okay we've got a thing to stop which isn't a complaint by the way i, no, I like, no, it's, I like it's all a, that stuff in season one i think it's especially good because we've kind of kept away from that for the you know the last part of, of season one and then obviously yeah. last of last one, episode yeah. we did kind of have a season one next with the with the bomb and getting in there like that was that was kind of a mission as well kind of in that vein yeah but this i think this was inherently more interesting of no 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 this is the there's there's a there's an infection going around you know prevent x people from having it or, and you know keep yourself there rather than you know, here is something direct to go and stop it's it's an illness it's it's a bit more abstract than that so i think it's inherently a bit more interesting in how you work around that yeah i mean i'm expecting our main team to get saved obviously i'm just wondering like how many deaths actually happen worldwide by the time they they do get a cure out there and they do circulate something that helps yeah exactly and because obviously they're struggling right now Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone's struggling. We see the hospitals just like a mess and full and that capacity. So, uh, no, really interesting episode. But obviously, the big oh, oh I think from a, a plot point and all that mythology stuff at the end, where it confirmed all this stuff about the faction and the director. Yeah, it really set up a bunch for the season going forward, which is obviously and again the, the, the real interest in meat. New rules: the faction can send messages back. It cannot send people back. But it already has a ton of people back it, that it just true. needs to yeah. offload into bodies. But those people have no new knowledge based on the future. They they they're all they're coming all back at the same, same time. point. Yeah, yeah. But they've got messages to send back. 
However, if it's something like long, like what we've seen with Philip, they need a historian to remember it because they can't record it in any way. Yes. So, yeah. I wonder if they do have some historians in the machine still. They just haven't got them out yet. Uh, maybe. Uh, I wonder also if like uh, you're one of those people who can like speed write and can like just take down data like really quickly. I wonder if you could get one yeah. of them. They'd be useful <laughs> for this. They would, wouldn't they? But pen and paper can't can't, can't fault that with time travel shenanigans. Oh, no, 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 you ain't interrupting that. <laughs> so no, that's travel is episode five. Uh, I liked it a lot. So let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here, head over to patreon.com slash mail fudge TV. You can uh, get a link to that in the description as well, some other useful links. Uh, but otherwise that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV guys. Have you got any vanilla?